you know, I can talk about this now, but prior to therapy years ago, I would have never been able to talk about this. When they reach out, reach out, reach out, call, 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 text, 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 Hoover, you know, get their flying monkeys to find out what you're doing. That's the time that that narcissistic person is really, really hurting because you have gotten away, you detached. And so what, when you detached your uh, attachment lifestyle, when you attached from them, it activated their attachment lifestyle. And narcissistic people don't talk about this. The psychiatrists, psychologists, social workers, psychotherapists don't talk about the narcissistic people having an attachment style. We have to have an attachment style to make ourselves feel good based on what you do for us, what you tell us, how you treat us, how you make us feel, how you guide us, you know, pumping us up, giving us good ideas, making us feel better, you know, talking, saying good things about our projects, our jobs, our body, our looks. And so we become attached to that. And they don't talk about this uh, after therapy. They don't talk about this. I never see people talk about this, but I, I was a, made aware of to me when I was in therapy. And I was like, I was like cocky and everyone like, like, that ain't me. I don't, that ain't. She's like, Leon, calm down, you know, cool down. And so we have an attachment style because it, you feed our, our, our ego, you stroke our ego, you feed our voids, you know, you feed our, our lust, our, our needs, you feed, you feed our attachments, you feed our, our, our dysfunctions, right? You feed our, our, what we are addicted to, you feed our addictions. And so we have an attachment style. So when you, when you detach from an uh, attachment style type of narcissistic person, um, it drives us nuts, right? The toxins in our body start to jump around and we need that because what happens is the best person that we've ever had in our life, for me it was one, two, it was like three women, but the best person that we had in our life at that moment in time is now gone away. And so you, the female, doesn't, you don't feel that, that pull that you have, that strength when you pull away. Because at that time, you're just done. Leon, I'm tired of going in circles with you. I'm tired of arguing. I'm tired of being in a relationship that's not going anywhere. And you, so you just like, you get fed up and you, you, you go, you leave. And I'm sitting there like, oh shit, what do I do now? You know, because I come in love bombing. I know how to do, I know how to touch and, and all the physical things. I have the conversation. You know, I'm worldly, I'm knowledgeable. I have all of that, but I don't have, I don't have what it takes to be in a relationship. I don't have the, the longevity, the stand power. I don't have those things. And so after six months, a year, two years, three years, however long you stay, however long we stay together as a boyfriend and girlfriend, instead of husband and wife, instead of fiancés, I don't have what it takes to go beyond that relationship. I don't have what it takes to go beyond that comfort zone. And so you've been giving me that comfort zone for a long time. And all I've been doing is wasting your time. So when they start to call, 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 text, 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 it's like mommy has detached from me. Mommy has taken me off her nipple. I can't get the milk anymore, you know? And this is women that are attached to men, the women that are narcissistic like me. When the man breaks away, when he, he's had enough and he meets somebody that's taking care of him, that's making him feel better, that appreciates and celebrates him, the woman does the same thing. She'll come around, she'll start doing the things that you want her to do, my brother, you know, she will. But for the females out there that are dealing with a Leon, a me, a guy like me, once you pull away, it's like, I feel drained, right? You know, I feel the detachment. I don't have you anymore. And so the other the, the other supply wasn't as good as you, you were or are. And so I'm now starting to see that. I saw it when I left, I just couldn't tell you that I didn't have what it takes to take care of you or to be your man in the proper fashion. So in the proper fashion. So now I'm with this other woman and she just has two or three things and maybe you've had, you, you have eight or nine things. And so I was like, let me go and get over here because I got her. She's solid, she ain't going nowhere. But then this other girl I get, it's like, damn, after a while you realize like, man, I screwed up, you know? And then you start, they start coming back. They start calling, they start texting, start hoovering, start coming around and they send the flying monkeys out to see what you're doing, to see if you're dating with anybody. It's funny, you know, once we start going through this, it's funny to you, but it's not funny to, to us because when we were doing what we were doing in a relationship, it was funny to us, but it wasn't funny to you because you were hurting and I wasn't hurting. But now when the tables turn, I'm not built to, t to handle that. I'm not covered. God doesn't look out for me because I'm being evil. I'm being demonic. So when the tables turn, it's my turn to suffer. And narcissistic people do not know how to suffer. We can't handle suffering. Suffering. It goes to our childhood when we were discarded, when we were uh, bullied, when we were abused, when we were molested, when we were raped. That's suffering. It takes us back to our childhood because as a child, I should have gotten therapy from when I was like maybe six, seven years old, but I didn't. So people that are undiagnosed, unlike me, I'm diagnosed, but people that are undiagnosed, they go through life 
you know, using people, abusing people to make themselves feel better, make themselves feel bigger, make, them, make themselves feel more superior. And so when you activate that detachment lifestyle that I have, you know, it's like, I don't know what to do with it because I'm not prepared for it. I'm not educated on it. All I know how to do is be a narcissist and do what I want, get what I want when I need and, and just d discard other people and disrespect other people. But I'm happy go lucky all the time because I'm getting things done for me and to me, but you're not, there's no reciprocity for me, you know? And this is all before therapy. I started getting therapy at 47 years old, but prior to that, I was just like a, a, a fool, you know, a clown. So that's what happens when you start to Break away when you get your strength because God is going to give you the strength when you've been abused for weeks, months, months, years, and you're not getting what you're supposed to get from a healthy relationship because you are a healthy person. You are a committed person. You're not cheating. You're not mis misusing anybody. You're not abusing your partner. So you're going to get the strength at the end, and I'm going to lose more strength. I never had the strength. This is only the strength I had is what you gave me. Only power I had is what you gave me. So when it's time for you to go and the tables turn, like I say, when those tables turn, narcissistic people are not equipped to deal with it. And so they start to hoover. They start to call. They start to text. They start to apologize. But if it's in with, within six months or so, that's not enough time for them to say, yeah, you know, baby, I got myself together. I'm reading the Bible. They're not reading the Bible. I'm going to church. They're not going to church. They're lying about that. I'm in, th I'm in therapy. And they may go to therapy once or twice and then stop going. And so once they start talking about, you know, I'm doing better, I'm doing this, it, it, it's beyond six months. It's got to be like six months to a year. And if it is the six months to a year, if it's true, in those six months, that means they, they cannot contact you on their own or they told, they're told in therapy to not contact you if they go to therapy. But in those six months, they have to pull away. They have to not contact you. They have to be alone. They have to be in silence. They have to want it bad enough to make themselves better to be with you again if you're there for them when, when they come back or somebody else in a healthy relationship with a healthier mind. But within when people say, you know what, after they're gone and, and, and they come back like within a month or two, no, it's impossible to correct their deficiencies within two months. I was in therapy for a whole year. And even in a whole year, I was always itchy and agitated and walking in, walking out and uh, uh, unfamiliar with what's going on and didn't care and wanted to be there, didn't want to be there, wanted to change, didn't want to change, wanted to make some exchanges, didn't want to. And so when they come back after a month or two or three, begging and pleading and crying and getting their flying monkeys to help them out, don't believe it because it's not true, you know? Therapy is is very intense. It was for me. It has it had to be. Uh, you have to enroll. You have to stay. And so it's weekly. It could be for eight, nine months. It could be for a year. Um, but in my medical record, my therapy says indefinite. Yeah, indefinite. So when you get those people that are saying, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, baby, I'm coming back. No, they're going to try to come back. And then at, the, the, at this time, this may start to feel bad about what they did. But if you continue to move away and go in a different direction, you start to see that they don't feel bad anymore. Then they start to get angry. Then they start to curse you out. Then they start to call you names. Then they start to put you down. Then you go, see, I'm glad I didn't take your ass back. So be careful with that. Y'all have a great day.